Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar series. Uh, greetings from Vancouver International College Career Campus. I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. My name is Ilyas and I'm the uh, marketing manager here at uh, VICCC. And today we are continuing with uh, our Q&A sessions and uh, we are going to talk about our TESOL program today with our uh, program instructor and coordinator, Dina. Hi, Dina, how are you? Hi, Ilyas, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, good to see you here today. Thanks for joining us. Happy to be here. How are things with you? Good, very good. Uh, today was uh, rainy. I think uh, we can clearly say that uh, today was the official day of fall in Vancouver, at least. Yeah, pouring rain. I was pouring glad rain. I was inside. And it's windy, so I don't know what the forecast uh, looks like in the next couple of days, but I can clearly say that uh, fall is here now with us. Time for sweaters. Okay, um, so today we're going to talk about uh, our TESOL program. Uh, what is TESOL, uh, you know, and how can you enroll in our TESOL program? And we'll, we'll touch base on, you know, admission requirements and uh, what you really learn in TESOL. Uh, so Dina is going to answer uh, my questions today. But before we go on to uh, my questions, why don't we uh, start uh, with uh, introducing Dina uh, to our audience? Uh, Dina, can you tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, uh, how long you've been with us, uh, those things, and then uh, we can go ahead with our uh, questions. Okay, sounds good. So my name's Dina Van Dalsen. I'm BC born and bred. Um, I grew up on a small farm in the interior, and then I went to Victoria for university. Um, since university, I have been St I studied and worked abroad for four or five years. Um, I was a nanny in the Netherlands, and then I taught English in Korea, in New Mexico, and in Argentina. Um, so I also have been a language learner. I speak Dutch quite fluently. Mm -hmm. I can read and write as well. And I have conversational fluency in Spanish. So I get our students. I understand what it means to be a language learner. I have been in Vancouver for 13 years teaching how to be an English teacher. Great. Uh, so you have lots of uh, experience overseas. And uh, I think you skipped some some parts as well, because uh, I know that you've been to Turkey. You know, you yes. went there to set up our, maybe we can talk about it later too, but you, you've been there to, you know, set up our TESOL programs there. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I think you were in, in the Middle East uh, earlier this year as well to explore our, you know, options there as well with our partners. So, right? Yes. Yes, I was. It was lovely <laughs> to experience um, our new partnerships in uh, Saudi Arabia. Great. Um, okay. So why don't we start with uh, TESOL then? So what is TESOL in the first place and what what does TESOL stand for? Good, yes, that acronym. People often say TESOL without really even understanding what is it, it is. Is it TESOL, TESOL? How do you, what's the right pronunciation on this? I pronounce it TESOL, but that is not, there is no definitive. Some people say TESOL, some people say TESOL. It's like tomato, tomato, we'll accept both. Okay. Um, it's totally fine. And I don't even think it's regional. It's not like British and American. I think everybody just has their own pronunciation of it. And that's just fine. So it's funny. This is actually in my curriculum. On mm -hmm. the very first day of the course, we talk about what does TESOL actually mean? Because they know it's about teaching English, but they don't know each of the letters of the acronym. So TESOL, T is teaching, E, English, two speakers of other languages. So basically it is teacher training to become an ESL teacher or an EFL teacher. That difference being whether you're going to teach in Canada, in a country where we speak English, mm -hmm. or in Japan or Korea or Turkey or, or Brazil where English isn't the main language. So TESOL is an umbrella and it covers both teaching ESL and teaching EFL. Um, that's what TESOL is. Great. So basically, if you want to become an English teacher, 
uh, either in Canada or abroad, you need to have TESOL. Absolutely, 100%. Um, I always joke to my students um, about how just because somebody is a native speaker of English does not mean they can be a teacher of English. It truly does require some training. And I always say, my brother is amazing. He can teach you how to fix a car. He can build anything but you don't want him to teach you English. He needs, he doesn't have the training. So TESOL does that. It trains you to be an English teacher. All right. Um, so here's my uh, first question then. Uh, do you have to have experience to take this program? Absolutely not. TESOL is our sort of base level course mm -hmm. and no experience is required. Do people with experience take our course? Absolutely. Is it required? No. I have taught students who have just graduated high school. I've taught students who have just graduated, uni graduated from university, but they had a different major. I have taught teachers who had in-class experience for 20 years and want to come back out in for a refresher course to get more modern teaching styles. All of those are okay. And they all work well together in the same class. Our Tesla classes are about um, dialogue, conversation, interaction as well. So they can learn from each other. You can learn from a new grad, you can learn from a younger perspective, you can learn from experience and everybody finds that sort of mixture of experiences very, very interesting and helpful in the classroom when we get different perspectives into the discussions. So you're basically saying that, for example, I, I studied economics. Yes. I have uh, no training uh, or experience in teaching, but yes. I want to change uh, my career and I want to move to, let's say, to Asia uh, and teach English. Yes. Is this possible? Absolutely, 100%. I have taught doctors, I have taught lawyers, I've taught police people, all in that exact same scenario. They had their career, they've done it for many years, they want a career change, they want some travel, and so they've taken a TESOL course. So this is a great opportunity for uh, for everyone, actually, if they want to you know, uh, become teachers or change their careers. And this was the case, actually, a few years ago. Um, as we mentioned in the beginning, we have our TESOL program running uh, with a partner school in Turkey, in Istanbul. Queen TESOL Center. Queen TESOL Center. So when um, Turkey uh, was struggling with their tourism, all the tourist guides uh, were uh, basically unemployed and they lost their jobs. They ended up taking uh, our TESOL programs and then uh, they moved to China to becoming English teachers. So that yes. was... a very successful, very positive mm -hmm. thing for the school there. Exactly. Okay, so uh, what's special about this course? There's a couple of things that make it really, really special. The first and foremost one being our curriculum. We have our own books that we publish in-house and we've been working and developing the curriculum for many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and we're now at a place where we have a really good set curriculum. It matches the needs of our students really, really well. And as the industry changes, we're able to update their curriculum and, and match it. So in the wake of um, all of the pandemic issues and all of us having to pivot really, really quickly to go online to teach on Zoom, we are adding a little extra module to our curriculum about online teaching, teaching through Zoom, stuff like that. So I think that's one thing about our curriculum that's really nice is we're not using a published book. Um, a lot of the teacher training books that exist out there are great, but they're really, really, really difficult if your native language is not English. So a lot of our students are international and we've wanted to make the, the teaching more accessible. And that's what our book really, really does. So that's one thing that's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. The other thing our school does really, really good is the practical application. Mm -hmm. So within each four week course or four week time pe period of our TESOL courses, each student has anywhere from four to six presentations depending on which TESOL course they're taking um, and that's invaluable because it's one thing to study and read about something it's a whole other thing to stand up in front of the classroom and deliver your lesson in English 
to answer questions in English that you didn't plan. And for a lot of our students who are not native English speakers, that's really, really scary. But through our course, they get that um, experience. We guide them through it step by step um, to make it not too scary. And then they can graduate with a lot more confidence to be able to actually step in front of a real classroom once they have that certificate or diploma. Okay, so I have two follow-up questions uh, for this. First, our TESOL programs are usually four weeks, right? And I see other uh, TESOL programs uh, run elsewhere. They last for, I don't know, 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 24 weeks. Uh, are they teaching the same thing or is it like how different it is and how effective ours is? Uh, our test program and the second one is that especially with my prospective students from Europe uh, the the question they ask me is that how is it same or different from Celta and Delta okay um, so is our course yeah that's a couple of questions so is our <laughs> course equal and the answer is yes it depends you really don't look at weeks mm -hmm. I always tell my students look at hours mm -hmm. so our course is four weeks 106 hours the sort of minimum standard for a decent tesla program is 100 hours if the course does not have 100 hours i wouldn't take it essentially because mm -hmm. it's probably not a good one so again other courses might be six eight twelve weeks mm -hmm. but they're still probably only be between 100 to 120 hours they're just spreading them out over a longer time period okay and that's fine that's good that's not a problem ours is very much an intensive course it's four weeks it's hard work it's going to be super super busy but you're still getting the same content you're still getting the same amount of practice that you'd be getting in any other equivalent 100 to 120 hour course um is our course equivalent to celta or delta um the answer is we are equivalent to celta okay our course is basically um equivalent to celta the only thing is celta is basically a brand name of tesla which is very very popular in europe right mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. right there england's mm -hmm. right there cambridge mm -hmm. is right there it's it's a branded tesla is basically all it is basically and it's the same thing it's the same thing as branded. So, the only difference mm -hmm. is if Celta uh, is Cambridge, oh my gosh, English language teaching for, or certificate for English language teaching for adults. That's what that um, acronym means. So mm -hmm. there's specifically the Celta, the A is adults. So they really only look at teaching English to adults. Whereas in our programs, especially our secondary programs, we look at teaching different ages. And even in our TESOL course, if a student wants to to kind of have more of a, a middle school or teenager or even a children focus if they want to have that because that's their eventual teaching goal mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. can do that with an our test of course we have a flexibility mm -hmm. in how we deliver it so it's not only geared towards the teaching of adults that's the only way our tesla would be different than celta but it's equivalent delta is like second step oh, i see okay, okay. So it's more hours. So just like we have TESOL Canada Standard 1, we also have TESOL Canada Standard 2. So mm -hmm. Delta is like our TESOL Canada Standard 2. So it's kind of like doubling the hours. Um, it's like a 250 hours of, of content and curriculum imposed to 100 or 120. Okay. Uh, so since you touch base on uh, uh, some of these, uh, what topics are covered in TESOL? Okay, for that, I am going to bring you guys to a slide just okay. so uh, it's easier for everyone to see. Uh, there we go. Share. Okay, so we have 11 chapters in our book. These are the chapter titles here. So teacher communication techniques is how do we talk to the students? So there's things about using your hands, doing gestures. There's some technical words like elicitation, giving instructions, asking CCQs, making the class more teacher-centered or student-centered. 
that's what we teach in teacher communication techniques. Theories and organization is all about how to organize your classroom, how to do grouping, how to manage timing, um, that sort of thing, as well as the history of um, teaching methodologies. Um, obviously, reading um, and vocabulary speak for themselves. The students do reading and vocabulary um, practice lessons. Visual aids, really about how to use the whiteboard effectively, as well as other things like flashcards. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking and oral error correction, how to teach a speaking lesson, grammar, how to teach grammar, listening, writing and written error correction, pronunciation, and assessment means how do you build a test or how do you how do you check that the students are understanding what they've learned in your classroom? So those are our 11 chapters that we complete in four weeks. So yeah, they plan, they learn how to plan a lesson, how to write a lesson plan, how to deliver a lesson, how to give good instructions, how to give constructive feedback, not saying no, or that wasn't good, but how to inspire your students to go further, even as you're telling them maybe what they need to work on, that sort of thing, as well as a little bit of classroom management as well. So okay, what we so, teach. Mm -hmm. So I assume they, they'll have uh, lots of assignments in homework. Yes. Um, what should students expect? I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an intensive program. Uh, it is. It looks like. So how many hours uh, per week other than class time they have to study? Do they get homework every day? Uh, can you please uh, guide Talk us? About that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is an intensive program. So like you said, in four weeks, they're going to get a certificate at the end that says you're ready to be an English teacher. So those four weeks, you should expect to sort of live and breathe tussle. Um, I feel bad sometimes for some of our students because they come in the wonderful, beautiful Vancouver summertime and they don't get to enjoy the weekends as much as they want to. Um, but it's not insane. Um, good time management, good focus, you can get through it. So on a regular day, I would say one to two and a half hours, one to two hours. It really depends on the day, what sort of assignment was given. Some hours, some days, maybe only half an hour. Um, we have assignments called mini lessons and we have some tests. So on those days, you're going to spend a little bit more studying for the test or preparing for a mini lesson. So that's three to five hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then micro teachings are our kind of longer, bigger assignments. They are always given lots of lead time. So the students really do the major prep for them over the weekend before the the next week. And so that weekend prep for micro teaching might be anywhere from eight to 10 hours, just depending on the student's own sort of language level, speed, ability to be creative, that sort of thing. So yeah, okay. it's intensive, there's homework. All right. Um, so do they have to, or what do students have to bring to class? Just okay. themselves or? Really, I say three things. Okay. They have to bring a laptop, very important. Okay. It makes their life so much easier. Um, especially this was crazy during the pandemic this year. Mm -hmm. One of our students only had an iPad. It worked. She could do it, but she was a little bit limited in some of the things. Mm -hmm. um, and I have had, thankfully, none of that happened in March this year when we, we pivoted online. But I have mm -hmm. had students who don't have laptops or tablets at all. And they, they kind of rely on the school's um computers or the public library computers and any other time of the year that would be fine but you're limiting yourself to the the hours of the school the hours of the public library and obviously when the mm -hmm. pandemic hit that wouldn't have worked at all so i i highly 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 suggest coming with your own personal laptop this symbolizes creativity <laughs> um, um the ability to try and think of things outside of the normal. I, I have a lot of students who are like, but teacher, I'm not creative. I'm like, you can be creative. You just need to let yourself be. So being open to new ideas is really, really important. And then hard work. <laughs> um, again, it's an intensive course. You are expected to do homework every night. If I, I tell most students, if they come with a good attitude and the, the 
the interest of working hard, they're going to pass. There should be no problem. They're going to get that certificate at the end, but it requires that, that time and that effort. Okay. Um, okay. So we talked about uh, TESOL and what to expect uh, in your class, but how, how do students get into TESOL program in the first place? So do, do we, I can also answer this question, but do they, obviously they have to have a certain English level, right? Yes, that's, um, for TESOL, that's the only thing that matters. Like we said, they're not required to have any um, pre-experience. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have uh, anything like that. They just have to meet our English language requirements. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that they can either take our online English entrance test or they could submit uh, a test a language score from like IELTS uh, or TOEFL school. or TOEIC and as well as the test and or the score they also have to have an interview. interview. So with the test and score and the interview if you meet the minimum require language requirements you get into the course but it is really important to meet those minimum language requirements because the course is so intensive because the course is in English all day long if the students don't meet that language requirement that will mean they won't be successful in the country. Exactly. And it doesn't make sense if you can't speak uh, English yourself, how are you going to teach it to others, right? Exactly, of uh, course. So uh, in IELTS terms, I think it was 5.5, right? That's correct, yeah. So just yeah, just to uh, clarify that as well. So, But of course, you don't have to have any IELTS or TOEFL scores. All you have to do is just um, connect with us and you can easily do that with our, uh, you know, through our website that you can see on the uh, chat box on the right hand side of your screens. We have a brand new uh, website. It's Vancouver.college and uh, Jim maybe can show uh, the website uh, while we talk about other stuff. Yeah, and this is our website. You can see it right here and you can easily navigate through. You can see our programs, our TESOL programs, uh, admission requirements, and all you have to do is just, you know, just send us an email and uh, one of our uh, student advisors or marketers will get back to you and, uh, and then uh, we'll guide you through the process. It's yeah. very easy and simple. And you can see our instructors and coordinators, program coordinators here as well. Okay, um, so, uh, I, okay, I took the TESOL program and then I, I completed. Uh, first of all, what's the uh, completion requirement? Do we have such requirements as well? We do. Um, our students must have a 70% uh, average on all their assignments in order overall in order to be able to. Okay. Um, so they complete TESOL and then four weeks TESOL and we give them their certificates and then can they teach in Canada or do they have to follow additional steps or are they um, how, how does it work for teaching in Canada mm -hmm. um, we suggest taking our TESOL advanced online okay because that is the TESOL Canada approved course mm -hmm. and and that requires that most of the students who are taking our general TESOL course are, are international students mm -hmm. and they can return to their home country very easily and with our certificate get um, a job at a private language academy. So whether that is in Japan, that's a Juku in Korea, uh, a Hagwan, that sort of thing, the private language academies, that's where our diplomas are going to lead to for most of the international students. Mm -hmm. I just had an email from a graduate yesterday. Mm -hmm. She already had her teaching license in her home country. Um, she came to Canada. She was with me um, in class in March when the pandemic hit and we all went online, but she's now back in Japan and she emailed me yesterday, Dina, Dina, I got a job. So she got hired at one of the public schools for the English teaching jobs. So she'll start that in April, 2021. So um, a lot of our students are doing that. 
taking our courses to get sort of a more modern take on English language teaching. Even if they studied education in their home country, their education styles are a little bit more traditional. So having this extra credential, extra diploma is a way for them to have an edge when they are competing against many, many others in a very, very competitive job market, especially in Asia. Okay, um, so do do our TESOL students uh, get the chance to apply their skills uh, while they're still in Canada? Like, uh, can they do a practicum or is this mandatory? Uh, and uh, if so, how long is that practicum? Uh, For sure. Last? Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of our programs have practicum options. Um, in TESOL, TESOL for Children, and TESOL for Teens and Adults, those are optional practicum. So you spend four weeks in class studying, and then you have the option of immediately doing a practicum after the in-class portion. And those practicums are also four weeks. So they get four weeks of, of in-class real experience, watching experienced teachers and delivering lessons to real students, not just their classmates. Our online TESOL Canada approved course, um, which is more geared towards native speakers, that one has a mandatory practicum. So that one, um, they have to complete the practicum in order to receive the and where do they uh, do their practicum? It depends which course they're doing. So today we're focused on TESOL, so I'm going to talk about TESOL. So mm -hmm. TESOL's practicum is four weeks, um, and it is done at our sister ESL school, Sprotshaw Language College. Mm -hmm. So they just, same building, just go up and down <laughs> the stairs. It's super, super easy. It's that easy. We Yeah, we already have a school, you know, ESL school, and they can easily come and uh, do their uh, practicums with us, with us exactly. as well. And uh, what tasks or assignments do students do during practicum? Do they get to teach to a class or do they just observe the teacher? Absolutely, they get to teach. Their assignments are sort of a blend of development assignments and actual face-to-face -face teaching assignments. So the one thing that they're required to do is they're supposed to fill in observation reports. So that's kind of for the early part of the practicum when they're still building a relationship with the host teacher and the host, the practicum students they're observing. Mm -hmm. So there, there are specific observation assignments that they're asked to observe something happening in the classroom and then reflect on that. So that's an assignment that they hand in to their practicum supervisor. But while they're on practicum, they are also expected to teach. How much they teach depends on the host class, the host teacher, but usually um, anywhere from two to four teaching experiences in the four weeks that they're on practicum. They can be smaller experiences, like just leading a warm up to mm -hmm. more um, formal deliver a grammar lesson with a completed lesson plan. Okay, um, so I just want to quickly touch base on our our other TESOL programs because you kept mentioning them. First of all, how many TESOL programs uh, do we have in total? We have four. We have okay. TESOL Advanced Online, which is TESOL Canada, geared more towards native speakers, but anyone with a higher English language level can get in. There's no in-class, it's only online kind of more correspondence. Okay. Our three in-class programs are TESOL, the introductory one, and then TESOL for children and TESOL for teens and adults. Those are our four. Uh, but to be able to take TESOL for children and teens and adults, right? You have to take the general TESOL first. Well, general TESOL or TESOL advanced online. Yeah, okay. those are tertiary programs, secondary programs. So TESOL for children and TESOL for teens and adults expect the knowledge that comes from TESOL. Okay, and then they just specialize uh, for children or adults or teens later exactly. on. Exactly. It's more focused, it's more development. So once you've got the basic knowledge from TESOL, mm -hmm. you can develop your skills to a deeper level with a specific focus. Okay. Um, I'm going to wrap it up soon here, but I just want to, because I just got a actually uh, prospective student uh, from Vancouver for TESOL Advanced Online. Yeah. She's a, uh, she's a local here. Um, once a student's complete TESOL Advanced Online, how, like, how, how do they become TESOL Canada uh, approved or certified? 
So they take their diploma from our course. Okay. They take their bachelor's degree diploma. Okay. It can and, be anything, right? Bachelor's degree in anything. Yeah. It just has to be a bachelor's degree. Any focus is fine. They have to grab the transcripts from that. They have to pay money and they have to have the records of their practicum. They submit all of that to Tesla Canada with a fee. I think the fee's around $200 right now. And they also be, have to be a membership of their local teachers association. Okay. So each province has a teachers association, a, okay. an English teachers association. So with their membership to that, that's all really, really simple. We have links to that. We explain that to our students when they join and there's, when we, when they graduate, they get a letter from us outlining all those steps and processes. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like any other professional certification, send in some documents, pay a fee, and then you get it. Yeah. So, uh, we, we have, uh, many local students right now in our, uh, Tesla advanced online. And I even, uh, saw students who, who had their masters in education, uh, in a Canadian university taking our uh, program. So, as soon as they complete our Tesla Advance online, basically, and uh, just satisfy the other stuff, they don't have to do additional testing or additional, uh, you know, they don't have to take additional courses. They just apply to Tesla Canada and they become Tesla Canada certified English teacher. Which makes it, yeah, exactly. Which makes which it, the, which is the minimum requirement for most of the schools here in Canada. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, that's all for my questions today, Dina. Thank you so much. Thanks, Elias. Uh, uh, so today we talked about our TESOL program, how you can, you know, get into our TESOL program and what we can do with our certificate from TESOL. And um, again, if Jem can show our uh, website uh, one more time quickly, where you can uh, reach us from, if you have any questions, of course. And by the way, if you have any questions right now, feel free to ask uh, on the chat box or you can click on the ask a question tab uh, while uh, we still have Dina here. We can ask uh, the question directly to her. Uh, if not, you can always uh, reach us out. Uh, I believe it's info at viccc.ca. Yeah. Uh, can you go on to the, uh, yeah, just go, yeah. There you go, and you can see everything, all the details about our TESOL programs here. Yes, and uh, our email address is info at viccc.ca. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll continue with our Global Business Expertise program tomorrow, and on Friday, we'll have our ITK program. Uh, it was uh, nice to see you uh, all again, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. And Dina, thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you. I'll see you uh, in the campus so soon. Yes, we lovely. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Take care. Bye, guys. Okay, bye. Bye. The most beautiful country on earth, three most livable cities in Canada, over 14,000 graduates, and 20 unique programs in English. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Sprout Shaw Language College. As a pathway program manager and a marketing manager for Europe, I will share with you today how you can live, study, and work in Canada. Canada stands out with its safe, multicultural society, quality of education, and high living standards. These things make Canada one of the most reputable countries in the world. It is also more affordable to study in Canada than other countries like the US and UK. Here, you can meet and study with students from over 75 different countries and also study and work through our career college. Or you can enroll in our pathway program to study at Canada's top colleges and universities while working 20 hours per week to obtain work experience in an English speaking country. If you want to be a part of this great experience at Spratcha Language College, apply today. Now it's time for Canada. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you.